Good day everyone and welcome back to another instructional video and in this video we will have another lesson to talk about. So are you excited to learn new concepts with me today? If yes, if that's the case then let's start. Alright, so in this video we will be talking about the evolution of media. But before we start, let me share to you our learning objectives for this lesson. First, Identify accurately different traditional media and new media starting from prehistoric age to information age. Next, appreciate the importance of knowing the history of media and the people behind its inventions. And the last one, create an infographic that shows the evolution of media. Alright, so I assume that you also have a little background about the different kinds of media, even the traditional media, since I know that you have also witnessed how media evolves through time, right? So this lesson will be too difficult for you to decipher. Now we all know that media involves communication channels through which news, entertainment, education, data, or promotions are disseminated. Moreover, media is also designed to reach the mass audience or the majority of the public, hence the term mass media. I know that you are all aware that one of the major reasons why media existed is basically to inform the mass public with what's happening in the world right now. That's why we have things such as newspapers, televisions, magazines, radio, telephone, and internet, and many more. So all of those things existed for the sole purpose that all people should also be informed. But have you ever wondered how media and information became what they are now? I'm pretty sure that you are all well acquainted when it comes to new media since you are born in the 21st century or the I generation. But the question is, do you have any idea how people in the ancient days communicate or spread information to one another? If no, then this is your chance to be able to know all the traditional medias that our ancestors used. <laughs> Actually, media and its impact have been around as far back as humans began to interact with different persons and tribes, integrating countries and creating different methods to communicate express one's thought and pass knowledge and information. So if we are to compare, it's very obvious that the people in our generation right now is more technology savvy compared to the ancient people. In our era, we already have laptops, uh, smartphones, internet, and many more. But let's not forget that it is also important that we should as well look back to the origins of these media and appreciate the people or the brilliant minds behind these inventions that we are savoring right now. Alright, so let's try to go back to the past where these technologies haven't been invented yet. Let's travel back first to the prehistoric age. This was before 170s or the time before the existence of written or recorded history. And in this time, archaeologists believe that a system of writing had not yet existed during this era. So in this time, people only discovered fire, developed paper from plants, and forged weapons and tools with stone, bronze, copper, and iron. As prehistoric men learned how to sharpen their tools and use them for hunting, they also acquired the knowledge on how to use these materials and carving stone Eventually, this paved the way for them to create their own way of writing. And these prehistoric men learned how to etch on caves. They drew on caves what they see around them, such as animals and nature. And these people also used these crude stone tools to create objects, which are now considered rock art. And the two kinds of rock art during this era are the following. So we have here the petroglyphs. These refers to carvings or engravings in rocks or caves. So as you can see in the picture, we can observe some symbols engraved on the rocks that maybe shows their way of living before. And we also have here pictographs. These represent words or faces through a symbol and used to refer to sketches or paintings that usually depict nature, early people's way of life. So as you can see, 
This is quite obvious compared to the first picture. Here we can see sketches of animals like a cow and a horse, I guess. And these pictographs are commonly found in caves. So we have here some examples of cave paintings in that era. These are painted drawings on cave walls or ceilings, mainly of prehistoric origin. So again, in this era, people normally carve what they usually see around them like animals or nature. And after some time, people began to discover making clay tablets. So these were used as a writing medium, especially for writing in cuneiform throughout the Bronze Age and well into the Iron Age. So these are examples of clay tablets in this era. Cuneiform is actually a system of writing used in the ancient Middle East and it was the most widespread and historically significant writing system in the ancient Middle East. And aside from cave paintings and clay tablets, people also began to discover papyrus. It is a plant and material similar to thick paper that was used in ancient times as a writing surface. So those are some of the things that existed during the prehistoric age. So let me repeat, we have petroglyph and pictographs such as cave paintings and they also have clay tablets and papers. So now let's proceed to the second era which is the industrial age. And in this era, most people associate factories and machines to industrial age. And this age began in the 18th century in Great Britain when the country made drastic reforms to improve their economy and technology shifted from using hand tools to operating power-driven machines. Moreover, selling of goods boosted during the industrial age and the concept of mass production or manufacturing of goods in large quantities was introduced in this era, increasing the demand for bigger and better machines. And also, special equipment were fabricated to meet the specific needs of different factories. The Industrial Age actually began from 170s to 1930s when people used the power of steam, developed machine tools, established iron production and the manufacturing of various products including books through the printing press. So when the steam press was invented during this era, the printing of materials like newspaper became much faster, cheaper, and easier. And this printing press was made possible after Johannes Gutenberg created the device for applying pressure to an ink surface resting upon a print medium such as paper or cloth and thereby transferring the ink. And these are some of the printing press devices that they have used during this era. So again, printing press is a device for applying pressure to an ink surface resting upon a print medium such as paper or cloth, thereby transferring the ink. And one of the examples of the newspaper that was published during this time was the London Gazette. So this was published in 1640. It is a serial publication containing news about current events other informative articles about politics, sports, arts, and so on, and advertising. It is usually, but not exclusively, printed on relatively inexpensive, low-grade papers such as newsprint. But aside from publishing newspaper, people invented more and they discovered the typewriter. So it is a mechanical or electromechanical machine for writing characters similar to those produced by printers movable type. It operates by means of keys that strike a ribbon to transmit ink or carbon impressions into paper. So before laptops were invented, we actually have this one. And the first typewriter was developed by Christopher Latham shows he is actually considered as the father of modern typewriter and the man behind the QWERTY typewriter keyboard. And until now, we are still using this QWERTY keyboard even in our smartphones, right? So we should really take some time to appreciate these geniuses for inventing such things because without them, our life wouldn't be as easy as we are right now. Next, aside from typewriters, telephones were also invented during the industrial age. 
I know you all know what a telephone is, so this refers to a system for transmitting messages from a distance along a wire, especially one creating signals by making and breaking and electrical connection. And through the telephone, people began to communicate even from a distance, and the brilliant mind behind this invention was Alexander Graham Bell. So he is known to be the father who created a device for transmitting message from a distance along a wire, especially one creating signals and breaking an electrical connection. And even before the industrial age end, we were still able to discover these devices that paved the way to the early production of film so they have motion picture photography or projection in 1890 they also have commercial motion pictures in 1913 and the last one we have the motion picture with sound that was discovered in 1926 these devices actually presents a series of still images which when shown on the screen creates the illusion of moving images due to a certain phenomenon or fee phenomenon. This optical illusion causes the audience to perceive continuous motion between separate objects viewed rapidly in succession. And that's the end of the industrial age. But before we proceed to the next era, let's have a short review first. So in the industrial age, these are the following devices that were invented. We have the printing press, newspaper, typewriter, telephone, motion picture photography, commercial motion pictures, and the last one we have the motion picture with sound. So now let's move on to the next era which is the electronic age. And from the word itself, this time electronic technologies already existed. And this started in 1930s to 1980s. And the invention of the transistor ushered during this time, and people harnessed the power of transistors that led to the transistor radio, electronic circuits, and the early computers. Moreover, in this age, long-distance communication became more efficient. That's why the era was stopped as the age of implosion. This age is actually considered as the age of implosion since advanced technology started to boom during this era. We already have transistor radio and this refers to a small portable receiver that uses transistor-based circuitry. It is a pocket-sized device that is used mainly for information dissemination and later on for broadcasting, entertainment like music, etc. So people in this age began to hear news from radio and even have their entertainments from there. Moreover, the television was invented during this era wherein people can already watch movies, news, and many more. Afterwards, personal computers started to pave its way and the internet already existed during this time, but it's not that strong yet. So after people discovered personal computers, they also developed OHP or LCD projectors. It is an optical device that projects an image or moving images onto a surface. And this device creates an image by shining a light through a small transparent lens. First, we have overhead projector followed by liquid crystal displays projectors. At first, we only had overhead projectors wherein we use acetate to print the text and then place it on top of the projector. But now we already have liquid crystal displays wherein we no longer need to print our presentation but we can already present by just connecting the TLP to the laptops. But I'm pretty sure that you've already seen this one since it's commonly used in school during presentations and your teachers sometimes use it as well. And those are some of the technologies discovered in the electronic age. We have the transistor radio, television, personal computers, and the OHP or LCD projectors. So now let's proceed to the last era. We have the information age. So this is already our generation right now. So this started from early 190s to early 2000s. And in this era, the internet paved the way for faster communication and the creation of the social network. People advanced the use of microelectronics with the invention of personal computers, mobile devices, and wearable technology. And the last one, voice, image, sound, and data are digitalized and we are now living in the information age. 
many social applications that were actually developed during this time that made people's lives easier. First, we have web browser. So it is a software application for retrieving, presenting, and traversing information resources on the World Wide Web. First, we have Mosaic. This was developed in 1993. And we also have Internet Explorer that was developed in 1995. But in our era right now, we already have Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Safari, and many more. After web browsers, blogs were also developed during this time. So it is a discussion or informal website published on the World Wide Web consisting of discrete, often informal diary style text entries or posts. So we have one example, the blog spot that was developed in 1999. And we also have the live journal that was developed in 1999 and the last one is the WordPress that was developed in 2003. But these blogs are actually very old and I don't think you're still familiar with this one. And aside from blogs, social networks were also developed during this time. So this is an online platform which people use to build social relations with other people who share similar personal or career interests, activities, backgrounds, or real-life connections. And the first social network that was uh, developed during this time is actually the Friendster. So this was developed in 2002. And actually, I was able to use this one, but unfortunately, it suddenly disappeared. And we also have Multiply that was developed in 2003. But this one, I'm not familiar with this. And the last one, we also have Facebook that was developed in 2004. And the most successful social network that was created that we are still using saying right now and aside from blogs and social networks we also have microblogs it is a broadcast medium that exists in the form of blogging it differs from a traditional blog and its contents are typically smaller in both actual and aggregated file size and it allows users to exchange small elements of content such as short sentences, individual images, or video links, which may be the major reason for their popularity. And the famous microblogs that we have right now is the Twitter that was developed in 2006. And we also have Tumblr that was developed in 2007. So for outspoken people, this is where you can uh, post your rants, your feelings and emotions, or just how your day went. Next, we also have video. So this is an electronic medium for the recording, copying, playback, broadcasting, and display of moving visual media. And one of the famous applications that produces video is actually the YouTube. This was developed in 2005. And we have here one example of a video, Pretty Savage by Blackpink. I'm sorry class, I'm a Blink fan. So let's try to play this video and enjoy watching. Oh, 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 oh. Come and say, put on bitch, all up 
Next, we also have augmented reality, a technology that superimposes a computer-generated image on a user's view of the real world, thus providing a composite view. And one of the famous augmented reality that existed and became a trend before was actually the Pokemon Go, wherein you will just roam around the streets and catch some Pokemon. But this game actually didn't last since it's very dangerous to those people who are playing with it. Next, we also have virtual reality. This is a computer-generated simulation of a three-dimensional image or environment that can be interacted with in a seemingly real or physical way by a person using special electronic equipment such as a helmet with a screen inside or gloves fitted with sensors. So in this case, we can really say that some people became unsatisfied with playing games using their hands or their mobile devices. So they created something that could give them a glimpse on how it feels to be in that virtual world. So I have here one example of a virtual reality. So please prepare since you might be dizzy after watching this video. Next, we also have video chat. This refers to a face-to-face -face conversation held over the internet by means of webcams and dedicated software. So this video chat is actually accessible to all people right now since we already have Messenger, Zoom, Google Meet, and many more. Next, we also have different search engines. So this refers to a software system that is designed to search for information on the World Wide Web. So unlike before that people really need to go to the library to look for information, but now we already have access to Google wherein we can search different information that we need. And this application was actually developed in 1996 and we also have Yahoo that was developed in 1995 but this one is really not that active compared to Google. Next, we also have portable computer. It is a computer that comes with a keyboard and display and one which can be easily relocated or transported, although less convenient compared to a notebook. And we also have laptop. This is a portable computer, usually battery powered, small enough to rest on the user's lap and having a screen that closes over the keyboard like a lid. So this one is actually more convenient compared to the portable computer since you can bring your laptop anywhere you go. Next, we also have tablet. So this refers to a portable computer that uses a touch screen as its primary input device and most tablets are slightly smaller and way less than the average laptop. And we also have here netbook that was developed in 2008. This refers to a small laptop computer designed primarily for accessing internet-based application. And we also have here 
uh, the very common one. Smartphones, a mobile phone that performs many of the functions of a computer, typically having a touchscreen interface, internet access, and an operating system capable of running downloaded applications. And the last one we have, wearable technology or wearable gadgets. It is a category of technology devices that can be worn by a consumer and often include tracking information related to health and fitness. Other wearable tech gadgets include devices that have small motion sensors to take photos and sync with their mobile devices. So I have here some examples of wearable gadgets. We have smartwatches, headsets, headphones, and many more. And those are some of the technologies and media developed in the information age. So again, we have web browsers, blogs, social networks, microblogs, video, augmented reality, virtual reality, video chat, search engines, portable computers, laptops, tablet, netbook, smartphones, and wearable gadgets. And that ends our instructional video for today. But before I end this video, let me share this one to you first. We don't have a choice in whether we do social media. The question is how well we do it. Okay, that's it. So thank you so much class for watching this video and I really hope that you have really learned something from this one and I also hope that you will really apply all of your learnings from this video. Okay, so goodbye everyone. Take care and God bless.